Hello, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Works WX176L switch driver. So let's get started. Starting off at the bottom of the tool, we have the battery slot as well as the torque control dial. Moving upward, we have the variable speed trigger, the forward and reverse switch, as well as the switch for changing which chuck you are using. Moving forward, we have the dual rotating chuck, which accepts one fourth inch hex shank shaft bits. In order to change which chuck you are using, you simply press the dual chuck release button, aka the red trigger, and manually rotate the chuck to whichever one you want to use, and then release the red trigger. Both sides of the chuck uses a locking bit holder, which will have to be pulled down in order to insert a bit or to release a bit. On the top of the drill, we have the two-speed selection switch, as well as the LED light just behind the chuck. Now let's talk a little bit about the build quality of this drill. The trigger is nice and firm with no wobble to either side, and it does not engage too early, nor does it engage too late. And there's good definition between the different speeds that this drill is capable of. The forward and reverse switch is fairly smooth, however it is a little bit difficult to put into the lock position, but it's not impossible. And the check selection button is nice and firm. Once the check has been rotated into position, it's fairly firm. There is a little bit of wobble, but it really should not affect any sort of normal drilling or driving applications. The torque selection dial is easy to turn, and there's a definitely a nice click to keep it from accidentally turning to a different position. The speed selection switch is fairly easy to change one-handed, and since it has a raised ridge on it, you don't have to worry about your fingers slipping off easily. Holding it in your hand and shaking it back and forth, the whole driver feels very well constructed. The battery feels like it's firmly in place and doesn't doesn't feel like it could fall off accidentally at all and there really is no wiggling coming from the inside of this tool. It's very well constructed and I was a little bit surprised. I always figured Works was more of a gimmicky kind of company and not a well-built tool company. Now weight wise, tool only, without any batteries or bits, it weighs 917 grams. And with a 4 amp hour battery, a driving bit, and a drill bit, it weighs 1,619 grams. The LED on the front of the driver is a very focused light which will only light up what's right in front of the driver. The light is engaged when the trigger is pulled and as soon as the trigger is released, the light will turn off. And here are some pictures of it next to our Ryobi half inch drill. Now the switch driver is a little bit longer and a little bit narrower and has a sharper driving angle, thus making it a little bit taller. And the battery slot is definitely thinner even if the batteries are not. Overall, I do like the build quality of this driver. Everything on it feels nice and solid. Nothing feels like it's cheap or out of place. Probably the only thing I don't really like about the build quality is the paint. The paint rubs off really easily and will make it look like a used tool fairly fast, but it's not really anything that will affect the performance of the tool itself. Power-wise, it had no issues putting small screws without pre-drilling holes into pine. It does a fairly good job with drilling small holes. It's not going to set any speed records, but it's not going to be the slowest either. And I was able to drill through a pine 2x4 in about, oh, it was about 21 seconds, and it did a fairly good job. The motor was a little bit warm by the time we were done, but it wasn't smoking hot, and there was no performance loss at all. So overall, with the largest twist bit drill bit I had, it did a good job. Now, exterior screws, it worked great up to about three inches in length. Once you got up to about three inches in length, then you'll either have to pre-drill your holes or you'll have to do some granny driving where you stop and start multiple times to get the screw fully into the surface. Personally, I actually kind of like doing it that way because it keeps you from putting little divots all over your wood where screws are. So for me personally, I don't mind it. Now let's talk a little bit about using spade bits with this drill. This drill is not known for having the most powerful torque behind it. And that really shows when you start using spade bits. In first gear, it is unable to turn the motor at all. And even if you're using a higher quality spade bit, it still is not capable of even starting the hole. Now, once you switch it into second gear, you will be able to make it through the piece of wood. You'll probably have some trouble once you get near the other side of the wood and you might have to stop and restart it a couple times, but it will make it through. Just don't plan on using cheap spade bits with this drill and you probably won't be too happy with the results. Now the biggest spade bit I used with this drill was a one and a half inch spade bit. And it made it through the wood and it didn't do a horrible job, it just didn't do it very quickly. I think part of the reason was it wasn't a very high quality spade bit. But at the same time, this drill does not provide a whole lot of extra power for using those larger bits. 
So if you are needing to use a larger bit fairly often, I probably wouldn't recommend this drill, but at the same time, it didn't do a horrible job either. Now let's talk a little bit about the torque behind this drill driver. Now, this drill driver only has 265 pounds of torque, which is not a whole lot when you start looking at other drills. Most other drills, you're gonna be in the 400s to 500s, even on the cheapest models. And it's just not that appealing if you're looking at it strictly from the torque perspective. Now, if you start looking at it from the convenience perspective and how quick and easy it is to change from your driving bit to your drilling bit and back, makes this very appealing. And for me personally, I was able to handle just about all the jobs I needed to do. I was able to help build a greenhouse with this and put up a bunch of security cameras. And I think that's actually the area where this stood out the most was when you're working on top of a ladder or on a high surface. It's just one of those things when you're on top of a high ladder or surface and you need to change either your bits or your tools that it puts a little bit more, I don't know, riskiness into the situation or just the inconvenience of having to go down and pick up the bit that you just dropped when you were changing the bit to a drill bit. And so it's one of those things where the convenience of it really is actually worth it. And it actually becomes addictive after a little while. Being able to simply change from your drilling bit to your driving bit with the simple pull of the little red trigger is a really nice convenience. And it really does save time because you're not having to go back and forth. Obviously in a lot of situations you're going to need an impact driver as well. But for most situations that I've run into, this little drill actually does a fairly decent job of getting through and doing 99% of what I need it to do. Now let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. Dual chuck. Having a dual chuck definitely makes doing a lot of jobs easier and more effective, as well as safer, especially if you're working on top of ladders or in high places where dropping stuff is a inconvenience or even a safety factor. So the dual chuck is definitely a win and the, really the whole reason to buy this electric driver. Solid construction. I was actually surprised just to feel how solid this tool is. It's not going to be the world's most indestructible tool by any means, but it definitely doesn't feel cheap either. I always viewed Works as kind of a gimmicky company, and I didn't think their tools were going to be very well constructed. And I was surprised. So definitely a win for it in this category. Lightweight. It's definitely not a very heavy tool, and considering how well it is constructed, it's a little bit surprising. So it's definitely a win in this category, especially if you're using it with a smaller battery. 20 volt slash 18 volt power. 20 volt and 18 volt power tools really are all 18 volt power tools. Just read the fine print. And because they're all 18 volt power tools means you can use adapters. I do own Works batteries and that's what I use in this tool. However, I do also own Makita batteries and sometimes having to lug around two different batteries to different jobs or different places is kind of a pain. And so being able to put an adapter on this and be able to use my Makita batteries in it is a very nice convenience. And it's something that I do do. And so I'm always appreciative when the tool is an 18 volt tool and not a 12 volt tool or a 20 volt tool because then I can't adapt batteries to it. 1 4th inch hex bits. Most driving bits are 1 4th inch hex bits, which means that this is pretty much a universally compatible with all driving bits. And nowadays there are quite a few manufacturers that are starting to make hex shank drilling bits as well. So in the long run, I'm really glad they did not decide to put a traditional driving chuck on this and they decided to put the quick release 1 4th inch hex bit driver on this. So I definitely say it's a win in this category. And first in the meh category, we have brushed. It's a brush driver. Would it be better if it was brushless? Yes, but it's still not a bad driver and I still actually enjoy using it. So it's really not that big of a deal. And the first and only con is no belt clip. Because of the design of this driver, makes it pretty much impossible to use it in a holster. Not having a belt clip was a pretty big design flaw in my opinion. Now, most people don't use belt clips and honestly, I don't use them very often myself, but it still would have been a nice convenient thing to have and it really would have cost them much money to at least put a point where you can mount a third party belt clip on it, but they didn't do that. So in my opinion, that's kind of a negative. And that was really about the only con I could find. You could argue that not having a higher torque rating is a con or that since it's not an impact driver that that's a con, but 
honestly, the convenience of being able to switch between the two different chucks is so nice and so handy, and it will save you time in between having to go in between two different tools or have to change your bits out on your single drill that I think it's well worth the price, and I actually really enjoy using it. And I actually find myself reaching for this more often than I thought I would, simply because of that quick change feature. Now, I do have more expensive drills, and this won't do everything that a normal drill can do. However, it will do probably 80% of what a normal drill can do, excluding any sort of work in concrete or masonry material, but that's a whole other story. And it just does a nice job, and that quick change feature is addictive. So, I do think that this is well worth the price, especially if you do a lot of work up on top of ladders, or just in other areas where carrying two tools is inconvenient, or you're having to change in between a drill and driving bit a lot. So, I would definitely recommend it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Have a great day, or night, or evening, or early morning, or whatever time of day it is.